Hi there, and today's podcast is all about the value of play. Now, as young children, we play without even thinking about what we're actually doing. Sticks become spears and swords, and cardboard boxes make excellent castles. We just have loads of fun. Now, these and other methods of play allow us to experience some aspects of the real world, but in a non-threatening way. Also, we manage to engage our imagination without the presence of artificial barriers or filters that adults tend to employ for just about everything. Then, as we go to school, we're taught to pass exams and we play just a little bit less. When we leave school and go into the world of work, our employers then try to recapture this lost creativity. Should we actually have been forced to leave play behind in the first instance? Now, here's a little bit of homework for all you folks listening. For children, play is a key learning activity. It acts as a sort of trial and error laboratory for trying things out. There are actually some parallels here with what happens during an adult brainstorming session. Now try observing children who are playing and use this sort of philosophy in the workplace. You'll see that play is neither a practical task nor purely internal imagination. And the objects that child uh, will play with actually have a dual nature. On one hand, a piece of cardboard is just cardboard. On the other hand, it's also whatever the child dreams it to be, a sword or a magical object. Adult metaphorical thinking is very similar. When a child is playing, we don't say, don't be silly, that's not a sword, it's only cardboard. But in the adult world, a brainstorming session is also a setting where it is acceptable to play with bizarre ideas. The only problem is we do say, don't be silly. Play is also a way of managing strain. Both the child and the adult who are solving a problem want to do things they cannot yet do. And this gap creates a strain. Playing and problem solving both temporarily reduce the strain by pretending or imagining ways of which that gap might be closed just a little bit. In some cases, this gap can actually be bridged. Now, being practical, here are some things to consider before embracing play as part of your creative toolbox. It helps if the setting you choose for playing is perceived by everybody as somewhere where it's acceptable to behave in odd ways and express unusual ideas. If you wish to play on your own, then this is much easier. However, you do have to give yourself permission to play. Otherwise, there will be that nagging voice that keeps reminding you that you had sensible stuff to do. People often communicate ideas better if they share the same illusions. For example, the same culture or the same religion. However, a little friction can throw up some useful ideas. Create a climate that gives some sort of sense of emotional security, but one that isn't boring or even perhaps overexciting. Participants need to feel there's little risk of appearing foolish or coming to any emotional or physical harm. Some behaviours like humour are usually harmless, but others may withdraw at sarcastic humour, so be careful. Defensive or aggressive responses tend to undermine group working and you've got to manage those carefully. But there is a sort of intimacy that's generated by sharing and it means that successful play activities can be useful for building social links. But be very careful. Sessions that go wrong can have the opposite effect. People will say, I opened myself up and look what happened. Now, they're never going to do that again, are they? So, what sort of play is actually useful? Well, any really, 
as long as it's directed at achieving something specific. All of the things that you need to do within your business can be tackled using creative techniques and all require some experimentation and a change in the way you think. There are individual techniques which I could tell you about and if you're interested, please do get in touch. But for now, I'm just talking about general guidelines. We have only just touched on emotion here, yet, as we know, it plays a key part in unlocking creativity and in decision-making. In reality, we do go by our gut instinct, then try to justify our actions. We're not entirely rational thinkers, however hard we try to be. So, value play and enjoy! <laughs>